Hi, everyone. How are you this evening? We are doing a test with using a different type of streaming tonight for the balloon technique, and I hope it works better. We did a test earlier, and the sound seemed to work really well. So um, let me know if you're out there. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. I have your new live one. Okay. Good, good evening, everyone. Paula McCoy, Colors for Earth. Thanks for joining me. Um, I have, looks like we've got a few people that found me. Yay. <laughs> um, in the comment section, tell me, hi, Jenny. Uh, say hello. Tell me where you're from so that I know you can hear me and see me okay. And uh, hey, Miss Amanda, I miss you. <laughs> Miss talking to you on the phone. Okay, so I'm trying a new streaming um, broadcasting system tonight. If this works really well, then this is probably what I'm going to go with. Um, it gives me some other options, and I didn't have any problems with sound earlier like I did the last couple of weeks when I switched cameras. So, hi everyone. It looks like people are finding me. So, hopefully, it did give you a notification that I was going live. Um, I will try to do some scheduled things with this. A lot to learn every time you change technology. So anyway, welcome tonight. Um, we are going to do the balloon painting with the glass enamels. So um, I have another YouTube on this, but I thought you guys asked me to redo and revisit this. So maybe I can show you some different things along the way here. So hi, everyone. So definitely type it in. Hey, Larry Knight. Um, type in the comments. Uh, I did put a link to the website in the comments earlier and a couple of different things. So you should be able to see those at the top of the comments. I'm not sure how they appear on your end, but we're going to give a give it a go. So, all right. So it looks like we've got quite a few. What I'm going to do is switch over my cameras. Hey, Nancy. And um, Jenny, Robin, somebody, if something happens to my audio, please let me know. Okay. So I'm going to go to my overhead. Okay. And you should be able to see, um, I have a side camera set up because you're going to need to be able to see that with the balloons. Um, our website, and I do have the website scrolling along the bottom there. Uh, if you buy any of our Colors for Earth glass enamels, any of our glass products, we have a closed Facebook group. And this is the name of it, CFE for Colors for Earth Glass Color Artist. It'll ask you questions. If you don't answer the questions, I will not let you get in, okay? So you have to have purchased some of our product. If you purchased it from a particular dealer of ours, put that in there, um, or if you purchase it from the website, whatever. Uh, so do that. And then also, I have a YouTube channel for those of you that don't know about it. It's under Paula McCoy. You'll see the Colors for Earth logo. Be sure and subscribe. Click the bell to get notifications. And this particular program I'm using will let me go live at the same time uh, onto YouTube and to different Facebook pages. So next, I may try that over the next few days before next Tuesday and uh, see how that goes. Okay. So here's one of the pieces. And then I have another smaller piece here that's just a little trinket dish. So this is one that I did in the other video. Um, I did it on white glass and I backed it with white glass, okay? You don't have to do white. Actually, I've got quite a bit of clear ready to go for tonight. And you can see my little jars of color. I have mixed some up, got those mixed up and ready to go, but I will show you the proper mixing when we get started, okay? One of the things I wanted to share with you, these are some of the balloons. So this says uh, water bombs, and these balloons are fairly small, okay? They're a pain, and let me tell you, with fingernails, trying to tie a balloon was not good. So um, these are just, again, water bombs. So they are just a smaller balloon, depending on how much you blow them up, okay? Always have a couple of them done. Actually, I've got about six because if you catch the edge of your glass with it, you will pop it. Okay. Here is just a regular standard balloon. So it has a larger surface versus the smaller balloon. Okay. So that makes um, a huge 
difference as far as how big of a surface you're working on. Okay, so you need to have those blown up and ready. Um, the larger one was just a regular party balloon. Okay, the white one. All right, so that's what that one is. And I'm on my camera, it's backwards to what you guys see, so bear with me until I get the hang of this. Uh, what I've done is take the dry enamels, Colors for Earth enamels, it's all dry powder, comes in one ounce, two ounce, and pints, four ounce and pints, and I've mixed it with the glass medium, the GM300, okay? So you can see those. And I've mixed 50-50 for this particular technique, okay? So you can see the different little patterns. So if you can just imagine that I basically pushed the balloon down into certain areas. So this is very similar to the pores that we did a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so I'm gonna move those out of the way. And this was just a smaller one, okay, as far as it goes. And I'm trying to watch for uh, the lighting and everything. So I have a piece of glass here. I have just like a little five by five piece of white glass. Always put paper towels underneath you uh, because when you start pushing down on your areas of color, it's gonna squish it out, okay? Push it out. So I like to start, let's let's mix up a color quickly. That way you'll see that. So I'm gonna use uh, 343 Sapphire Blue and mix them up. So I'm just taking it out. We did put some little scoops. I have them available on the website now where you can purchase as opposed to doing that if you want to measure exactly. Um, I usually just eyeball. 50 50. So, Bert, can everyone still hear me okay? Everything seems to be working. If somebody can, I'm not watching uh, the chat, so um, just let me know if you can't hear me, okay? Put it in the chat there. So, Bert, my husband is my assistant tonight. So, any questions that are in the chat, he will read those to me and I will answer them. I also go back at the end of the video once it's uh, finish rendering and it's up and I go back and answer everybody's questions even though I've answered them online talking to you like right now because I feel like you need to have that you know uh, if someone's watching the replay later it's a good idea to have you know it in there also okay so I've just got a little bit mixed up there that was the 343 sapphire blue so I'll tell you the colors as I'm using them all right so we've got this here Here's our white glass. I always start and work light to dark. That's just my rule of thumb. So what I'm going to do, and this is maybe hard to see until I get the colors, I'm going to pour out like some dots of color. And you don't need a whole lot. Again, this is mixed 50-50. Okay. Right, yes. Okay, we have a question. Are the animal colors food safe? Are the what? Are they oh, colors? everything that I'm using with the exception of the sparkle, as long as it's a G series, okay, so if it has a G in front of it, okay, if it has a G in front of it, that means it's food safe. If it's GT, T meaning toxic, then it would not be food safe, okay? So, yes, everything is. I did mix up a sparkle just so we could... Uh, try it because I haven't tried it with this technique yet. So now what I'm going to do is add some of the color and I'm putting it on top of the white. And that, that was 322 lemon peel. And now I'm going to add some 334 tea rose. And you don't have to put it on top of it. We'll put some out here to the side also. Okay, so again, that was 334. My labels really rubbed off. T rose, 334, T rose. And let's throw in, how about a purple? Once again, uh, as we did the pours, I like to do no more than five colors, is my rule of thumb. And I'm going to put some here separately. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to grab a balloon. All right. And let's make sure you can see. So I'm just going to start pressing into it. Okay. And you should be able to see that on the side camera. So press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. 
So I'm catching where I, and now what's on the rest of my balloon, it's on the bottom here, okay? So I can keep using that. So it disperses and creates additional patterns every time you touch it. So what I'm looking for is coverage on the glass. Isn't that cool? It's like tie dye. It's pretty. Now you can see that is there's still quite a bit on there. So if I had another piece of glass, I could just go over to it and start doing another piece with what's left. OK, so can you see that? What do they think of that? You guys like that? You like the look pretty hard to mess it up. It's pretty easy. OK, what do you guys think? You like it? OK, I'm going to set this one over here to the side a little bit. And let's get a clear one. And I probably need to put another paper towel down so you can see. Do they like it, Bert? Easy. Any questions so far? Uh, just the normal one about when it was be on replay. Yes, it'll be on replay. It'll stay on my page uh, for sure. Okay. All right. So. Um, you don't have to start with the white. Let's say we want to start um, with maybe mint julep. So this uh, this one here is 355 mint julep. Okay. Let's see. Love it. I do like it. Like it. Love it. Me okay. Very cool. Love this. Like this. All right. So everybody seems to like it. All right. So I mixed these up maybe 30 minutes ago. So I'm just giving it a quick stir just to make sure because uh, it does start to separate as it sits okay so let's do another one and let's just do three spots this time and how about we add some teal this one is 357 teal okay and i'm going to add it i'm going to just put it beside it so you can see the difference really it i mean and then i'm going to put some on top there too um, as you touch it with the balloon and go over it it's amazing because you can change the pattern up like you wouldn't believe how about we throw a little sapphire in there and brighten that up so let's put that on top of the teal okay so i've mixed up quite a bit here but as you can see it doesn't take a whole lot to do it. Um, the only waste would be on the uh, end of the balloon. So I'm going to move that one out of the way and I'm going to have another piece here ready to go in case I have quite a bit left. All right, here we go. So squish. And that's why I wanted the side camera because I wanted you to be able to see the amount of pressure. And I did clean my glass, um, although it doesn't look I didn't clean the balloon. So now it's repelling. I guess I should have probably did that. That's okay. It'll work. We'll make it work. I did clean my glass with uh, distilled vinegar before I started. So all I'm doing is picking it up and putting it down in a new area because there's still quite a bit on there. Okay. Okay. Mix with layering mix or medium for 50-50 ratio. I mixed it with just the glass medium. The only reason you would need to mix it with layering mix would be if you wanted uh, to do something on top of it before you fired it. So this is just your straight, normal enamel mix. And I went to 50-50. So you can see that and it kind of disperses. Now, could you pick it up and move it? Absolutely. And I'm going to have balloons flying everywhere. Can you use float glass for this technique? Absolutely. The question was, can you use float glass? So I can tip this and move it some more if I wanted to. Okay. So that is possible also. All right. So let's go back to another piece. And you know what's going to have. Any other questions before I move forward? No? Uh, one person that uh, well, you know, I think it's because of the balloon. So let me do this. What uh, kind of glass and where do you get it? Okay, so I'm using 96 COE glass, and you would have to find someone, some type of glass distributor uh, or a company that carries the glass. We do not carry 
any glass, okay? I'm gonna just, this sounds terrible, but I am gonna wipe off my balloon with my um, distilled vinegar is what I used, okay? White distilled vinegar, and that's what I've cleaned my glass with also, all right? So let's do another one and let's pick some different colors. Let's do yellow again, no. Let's do a cerulean. This is 351, okay? Cerulean blue. And let me just kind of stir it. All right, so if you have questions, put them there in the chat and my husband will read them to me, okay? Um, now, oh, I'll do that on another one. Never mind. Okay, my mind gets to going. So you can see you don't have to put them on top of each other, but if you want to, you can. And you can see it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, I've mixed up probably, it's about a, about a teaspoon and a half of these colors. The smaller ones, maybe just a teaspoon. All right, here we go again. Just touch and touch and touch. So it carries whatever is on the bottom and you just keep going. Now, if you get to a point, so you're just using whatever's on the bottom of the balloon. It is crawling on the edges of this. I'm not sure why, because I did clean my glass, I promise you guys. Now see if it's real thin and there's not enough on it, here on the edge, you get kind of a splattery look which could be kind of cool but i'm going to go back to the center and grab some of that and bring it out you also if you say oh maybe i wanted more of the dark just be careful and don't drag this along the edge of your glass because you will pop your balloon okay i've done it and it scares you the daylights out of you let me tell you so if i wanted more of the light or the dark I could come back in and I can add some of that on the top if I think, well, you know what, I lost it right there or right mm -hmm. there. You can do add. You, do you always use dots, no lines? Um, you know, you could use lines. This, oh. I just really like this effect, but I will do that on the next one. So it's really to each their own. I mean, you can come up with all different kinds of patterns and actually you can make a floral and I'll show you that one next. You see, we're going to have a lot of giveaways that I'm making, right, guys? That is, if I can find places to set these. Hold on one second. I always do that. I never think about what I've got going. All right, so... Did you wear another color on that if you wanted to make yellow? On top of it, after you've squished it? Yes, you could add colors on top absolutely absolutely yeah it's really you can play with it and make it your own i mean this is so easy and simple you know even kids can do it um question they wanted to know the last question was could you layer some on top of it yes just don't get too thick as long as your enamels are mixed to the proper consistency then you're good okay what are you laughing at did somebody okay there's another why, question why don't, you use the other end of the balloon? why don't i use the other, end? You use the other end boy you guys are wanting me to do all the experimenting um can you do this on this no is that luann no that's marie right no i don't think so marie um okay what i did was i i squirted out just a little bit of the glass medium and I'm gonna just kind of disperse this on the glass with my Sumi brush, just for like a thin base coat, so to speak, to work on top of, just to give me some background. Okay, so I've just poured out three drops or three little petals of it, and I'm just thinning it out because I'm gonna put other colors on top. This is how I did uh, one of the flowers. So, if I want a flower that is, let's see what colors we can do. We can do pink with some coral in it. So just, just curious what pattern appears on the back side. Um, I'd have to wait and let that dry to show you. 
Um, it will be similar, but you're going to see more of the dot pattern for sure. Okay, so what I've tried to do is, uh, you know, this is live, so it may or may not work. I've simulated like a flower and I put down three, three, four T rows. I should have put down the coral first. Um, and then if I want a little bit of the coral in the middle, Okay, and now we're going to go with the balloon and see if I can create like a flower. So if I want to just squish it out and what I would come back and do is actually come back with the quill pen after I fire this and create like a Zentangle flower. And that's probably what I'll do. Okay, you've still got a lot on here. Do you guys see that? So I could go back and add that to another one or just wipe it off which is what I'm going to do, okay, um, because I want to show you, I want to add, this balloon has static in it now that I've been playing with it. Can you guys still hear me okay? Everything's working good? Okay, so I, I just... one comment about the lighting being a little darker on the overhead camera, but... Okay. Um, Actually, I don't see that. The side camera looks darker to me, but... Okay, give me one second. Let me... Hopefully I won't mess anything up. Let me see if I can. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that while I'm. That's I've got three you know, overhead. Yeah, I've got three overhead lights on, so it should be okay. So I'm just adding that yellow to the middle and kind of letting it blend. But do you see the flower? So when I come back later, I can. And if you had greens, and I didn't mix up any greens, but the. Um, uh, the mint julep. So on one of the other ones that I did, I came back and I added some greens out here where leaves were. And you can look at those um, pieces on the YouTube, the other YouTube shows you those. Okay. So you can see that you get a really cool. So now you can see where the pattern is kind of see where, I, and then I just took what's left on the balloon and filled in around it. Remember, if you cut your glass a quarter of an inch larger, you'll have an eighth of an inch um, framing around it. So what I'll do with these is try to match uh, glass to them for a backing, or I will take and uh, put a white on it. I got a little bit. So there's so many different things you can do with it. Um, let's do one in the line, like somebody wanted to know if you did it in the line. What would happen? You know what? I think I'm going to use that other end real quick and just see what happens. I'll probably make a mess. So it's more of a, I can't say that it's really anything, believe it or not. I don't know. I mean, it might disperse it in a smaller amount. The other thing is um, to be aware of that when you go down with your balloon and you lift up, try not to do it too quickly and don't have anything else setting near it because when you lift up there's a section and what happens is it can splatter over on something else so if you've got a piece that you love do not you know have it near there so that you won't get any splatters on it okay all right so i will show you what i'll probably do is get this one fired uh, i can't fire it tonight it'll have to be tomorrow because it has to dry completely and then i'll come back and do a live and show you how i would detail this out and that'll be sometime um, Friday or even Saturday. But I'll I'll give you a notification that I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. So let me move this one out of the way and let's do one in the lines that somebody suggested. And remember to comment. We give away uh, some of previous Facebook Live demo pieces because I don't need all those uh, samples just sitting around. So be sure and make comments and my husband will spin and see what... Your friend Karen is on from New Zealand. Hey, Karen from New Zealand. Okay, so what's Jenny... Oh, Jenny posted the link to the previous YouTube. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's do... I think this is what I want to do. Okay, we're going to go. Letton wants to know what cone, 022? 
um, okay, J uh, Janet, this is glass enamels. So this is on glass. Um, if you were doing it on like a wine bottle or something that you flattened, then it would be like a cone 015, 016. Okay, so I'm talking to a ceramic person. She's wanting to know um, what cone. So when I do my fused glass on, or used to do it when I was on float glass, I would go to an 015. The neat thing about float glass, which is window glass, you can buy at the Home Depot Lowe's and they will cut squares for you. They will not cut rounds. And you can put your enamels on it as long as they're dry, you can put it on top of a mold and you can fire it to that 015, 016. Or those of you that are glass fusers, you would go to your full fuse and it will cure the enamels and fall into the shape all at one time, which okay, is. Well, okay, we've got some questions while I'm working here. So after it dries and you fire the said enamel, do you then refire the piece to slump it? Okay, so the question was after you fire. So what I'm going to do is put another piece underneath this, okay, and I'm going to full fuse it, and then you would come back and slump it. Okay, so two separate firings. You always do your hottest thing first, and then do your cooler firing. Okay, so this is the line that somebody wanted to see. Let's see if it makes any difference. You put this in a full fuse? Yes, it is a full fuse with another piece underneath it, of course, because this is just three millimeter and you need six. Otherwise, your edges are going to pull in do on you. you. Do you sell the storage containers? Um, we do have storage containers. We have a set that um, has different sizes in it and it would be underneath the fire dart supplies on the website. So that's kind of cool. You do get more of a line as long as you go in a line, okay? I'm having to grab some to get out here to the edge. Um, and I can always set this color at 1380 and use it as a part sheet in something else and cut it up. Um, of course, you could go a little bit hotter. I'm on 96, but our product needs to go to a minimum of 1380, a minimum of 1380 so that you can uh, mature the color. If it comes out of the kiln and it is chalky looking, then it is not fired hot enough. That's how you can where, tell. Where is a good place to get the molds? Where is a good place to get the molds? Um, you know, Bullseye has molds. I would check with your local glass shop, support them first. And uh, any of our glass dealers are on our website. Scroll down to the bottom and it says CFE Teachers and Studios. And it's by state. And then definitely check with the person to make sure they have in stock what you're looking for. But Slumpy sells molds. Delphi Glass sells molds. Uh, DNL. AAE. Um, there's so many different ones out there. Um, bullseye. Uh, I would just search fused glass molds and see what comes up. Uh, Color Devere has molds. So there's all different types of uh, things available out there for you. Okay. We have some molds on our website. We have some of the older ones and then we have some custom things. Uh, just a few. That's not our main focus. So we don't have a whole lot, but hopefully you can see that. Yes, question? Can I cap this fire to fire it? Uh, if it's completely dry, yes, because you would need to sift between, okay? Sift between. You know what I was going to do? I was going to put silver in this, and I didn't do it. So I'm going to go back right now. What color is the purple? The purple is 339 grape. Sorry, I forgot to say that. 339 grape. And I used uh, cerulean, which is 351. I'm going to just add a little bit of this. Trying to get a little bit. Ha <laughs> ha. That's hard to do in those pods. Uh, these little pods that I'm using here, there's a package of 12, and they're real cheap on the website. And then there's a pallet and a pod. Now, guys, look at this. Do you see how it's dispersing within it? And I've not done anything to that. Okay, so let's just touch it with a balloon and see what happens. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So it'll just kind of feather, I guess would be a good word, into your design. Now, if you add the sparkles to it, remember the sparkles are not necessarily food safe and depends on how hot you go with them. 
Ooh, I like that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me, I hope I don't mess anything up. Let me go a little bit closer. Can you see that feathering? It's like dispersing and feathering. We could even go back uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, we used that, um, you could use a straw or that blower. If I can find mine, I didn't think to put it out here. Hold on one second. And you could, so this is a blower that I used um, a couple of weeks ago. I gotta find a place my balloons will stay out of my way. Um, it's in the ink, uh, alcohol ink industry. Uh, Jenny might be able to remember the name of it. I can't. So you could blow that into a different area or you could use a straw, you know, so you can push it around. I mean, there's all different types of things that you can do. Your imagination is your limitation, guys. It's really um, what you make of it. Okay. And um, yes, we have a question. Hold on. I like the purple line example. What would it look like by adding powdered silver color dry? Okay. You want me to try that? Yeah. Okay. So the person's asking, what would it look like if you added uh, powdered silver to it? I'm going to get a sifter. One second. You guys are testing me. You guys are loving this, aren't you? Okay. So I've got an enamel sifter. And we do not sell these. You can find them on Delphi, Slumpies, different uh, places, wherever you're buying your fused glass. If you're locally here, um, Cheryl over at Art Glass City in Louisville carries our product and carries bullseye and um, the sift bullseye sifters. Okay, so I'm going to just tap it. You could make yourself basically some dichro looking type glass. What? What happens if you add a glass spread? Is this the same basic question? Add a glass spread such as with a silver color when it used flat? Yes. If you're going, so the question was if they added a uh, frit that was a color, whatever that color might be, um, would it fuse flat? Absolutely. Because you're, if you're going to a full fuse, yes. If you're not, remember, you got to go to a minimum of 1380. Okay, I'm going to zoom in again so you can see that. Okay, so I've sifted and I'm not sure if it's gonna, I think you can kind of see that. Let me tilt it a little bit. There you can kind of see the shimmer of it on the full screen there. Okay. If you're silver. Yes. Would you full fuse your two pieces of glass then cover with powder when you slump? Well, the slumping temperature is not hot enough to, if you cover, so the question was, would you full fuse and then come back and add powdered clear frit over the top? And what I think they're asking is because the, the silvers, this was silver sparkle and our sparkles have a texture to them. You can mix your sparkles 50, 50 with any color and use it. And it is food safe. So you could actually mix this into a color and do it that way if you wanted so we can we can maybe do one of those i'm going to run out of space here good questions but your slump temperature is not hot enough to do uh to get your frit to fuse completely okay it is not hot enough so you've got to go to your full fuse i'm trying to wipe those edges again just in case there's something on my hands okay so let's say let me find let's do it in the purple so i'm going to add some silver sparkle 504 to my purple mix and then i'm going to mix that up now because i've added more powder i've got to add more medium so i'm adding the gm 300 so tonight i'm only using the gm 300 and i did put that at the top of the chat okay so and i don't know if you're going to be able to see this in there or not let me pour a little bit out you got another question yeah uh after full fusing could you cut the large piece into smaller pieces absolutely if you're going to cut it and use it as a part sheet 
I would just go to 1380 and that way you've got a thin sheet, you know, you got a three millimeter piece and you don't have to worry about trying to cut a really thick piece. Okay. So I don't know that you can see that or not, but let me just add some yellow with it. And when we uh, balloon it, we'll see what happens. Let's do a circle around the edge of these. So just your imagination, you know, whatever you can come up with, I don't think you can go wrong with whatever you do. Okay. So I don't know, can you, I can see the shimmer in that. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. And I don't know if it'll show up once I do this or not either, but we'll try. And I may not have enough color out here because you saw I didn't put but just three little dots. So let's pour some more of this. So you can come back. I'm almost out of that purple. And just work it in to your design. Kind of cool. It's it's so fun, you guys. You just need to quick and easy, you know, mix up uh, half a dozen colors combination and do it on some pieces and do it in part sheets and put it in the middle. It kind of reminds you of even like a pot melt type uh, design because it would be going or a screen melt also. Looks flowers. Like looks like flowers. Is that what they're saying? No, it's fluorescent. Oh, my husband said it looks like flowers. <laughs> so yeah, whatever it looks like. Oh, I got a loose balloon that's. Ooh. Um, that agrees. It says it looks like pansies. Oh, there you go. Well, I thought that on one of the other ones too, and then after I got it out, I was like, hmm. It, it just, yeah, let it dry and then look at it again and see. But isn't that cool? Now, I don't think you can see the sparkle in it hardly at all. But uh, when it fires, and really the sparkle, it, it's hard to photograph. But you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing there. Okay, so you see it gets messy. Definitely put uh, your paper towels down to um, catch all of that. And... Let's go back and look at that one. So you can kind of see, move it this way. You see all the sparkle in that? Let me tilt it towards one of the lights and maybe you can see it better. I think you can see it there. There you go. You can see it right there. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So what will happen is I will let these dry and then I will come back and do some designs with them. Some Zentangle, maybe use some designers. Um, you know, here's that other one that we did. So you could, like I said, you can tilt them. And all I did was use the glass medium mixing 50, 50. Okay. With our enamels. All right. Any other questions? Okay. He's going to find a question. Adding silver sparkle to the yellow and purple would be brilliant. Okay. I think that was maybe an old. Yeah, so look at the sparkles. And like I said, when you put it with them, uh, if you mix them together, then they become food safe. You don't have to could, worry about it. Could you fire this to 1380 and then top with clear and full fuse? Yeah, the question was, can you fire it to 1380 and then top it? So you're setting the color at 1380, and then you're going to come back and cap it with a color, uh, you know, clear glass. Absolutely, yeah. So you can see if you want to cut it up, great jewelry. Uh, let me switch back to my cameras since we're doing okay here. Yeah. All right. Hi there. So yes, you could set the color at 1380, then come back and cap it with clear if you had just the sparkle and you didn't mix it with the color. So that way it would become food safe. Now remember your sparkles, copper sparkle does really well between glass. Um, if you fire and set them, they they do better but they're a mica base so they tend to mute out a little bit don't ever cap gold sparkle on the first firing or you will have flesh tone color okay it do, doesn't work yes i know this is last night but do you think this would work we have a question it would work on keeps grilling on me do you think this method would work with glazes on greenware or bisque oh so luann 
So you're, yes, what I would do is thin your glazes down slightly. So take some out of your original jar, thin them down, or you could even do it with my color strokes. Um, color concentrates would be too heavy. Okay. But yeah, you could do it. And maybe we'll do that next week on ceramics. That'll be a good experiment. I may have to try something before then. So, okay. Um, Okay, Jackie says, great picture and sound. Okay, well, if this works, like I said, I'm trying this new system out. I like some of the features of it. So uh, unfortunately in the uh, free version, they put their little logo up there also. And uh, if I pay for it, of course, all that'll go away. So I may end up doing that. Hey, Nail Fair, how are you tonight? So, all right, Bert, are you ready to spin? And do you have your pencil and paper to write everything down? Because I don't have one. Yes, I have my pencil and paper. Okay, my no, secretary I'm is... Copying out my stuff yet. My secretary is getting ready. So, any other questions? I'll try to he's look. Well, oh, excuse me, his executive assistant. I guess he just gave himself a raise. But, you know, zero on zero is zero. So he won't get a raise. <laughs> uh, okay. Jennifer says, or Ginger says, definitely the best. Okay, good, good. So it may be worth investing in this program. Uh, believe it or not, I'm using the same program that I use with the regular Facebook. And I don't know what happens, but definitely this one has worked. So anyway, all right. So while he's looking, I'm going to switch back to the other screen and just put some of those pieces back up in front of me. So <laughs> he said to quit commenting. So here, remember, I smeared it on with my brush. So I will go back and, and add a little bit of white and touch that up. And I'll probably put this on a white background so it won't be noticeable. But can you, I mean, you could even take in and, and pull some out with a um, toothpick, you know, and pull in lines. That would be really cool. Ooh, maybe we should try that one. I kind of like that. See, I keep talking and I'll think of something else. Um, hold on one second. Let me transfer. I think this one's going to be pretty with the sparkle in it. You guys don't mind sticking around for a little bit while he's doing that, right? Um, let me grab a toothpick so that I have it. So I'm going to put white on first. And I'm going to put quite a bit. And... I think I'll leave it like that. All right, so let's use um, 57. And let's throw in, I got to pick some colors that I have enough of. Uh, mint julep. So that was uh, teal that I used. All uh, right. Okay, hold on. Are one. we giving away? And okay. How many are we giving away? And he wants to know how many I'm giving away. How many should I give away? Okay, so while this is, I want to show you, it starts to disperse on its own. Okay, so you could take your tool and I'm going to use it on the flat edge and you could pull it out. Okay, now I probably would have put white all over this, but guess what? You could still use this on top of a colored sheet and your design would only be in the middle. How cool is that? That's pretty awesome. And I'm just going in between each one of those and continuing to create like a spider web. So you guys inspire me. I mean, I could sit and play all night. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool looking. What do you guys think of that one? Do they like that, Bert? I'm going to put a sheet underneath real quick so that it kind of gives you a better picture of it. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? So toothpick, I just used our um, tool that we sell with the enamels. It's just called tool if you, uh, it's spatula, uh, if you put it in the search bar on the website. So you could just leave it like that. It looks like a tie-dye type thing. Very cool. Very cool. And if you wanted, you could come back in on top. Ooh, let's just add a little bit of sapphire in this combination. And now let's take what I do with my toothpick. Ah, it's missing. Got to get another one. Hold on. So maybe you just 
do it just in the middle. Okay, just for a smaller starburst type effect. Let's go in a little closer so you can see that. Isn't that neat? Wow. Now, this one I will probably put on a green piece of glass, or I may put it on a sapphire, like a really dark blue piece, okay? All right, guys, let's go back to me, and I think we're ready. All right, so this is a piece that I did in one of the uh, stamping videos a few weeks back. So this is, and this is a soap dish. Oh, I guess I should probably go back to the overhead so you can see it better. Okay, Woo, that's really close. Okay, so it's a soap dish and I put it in the slumpies mold that actually had a pattern in it because I had the white behind it. So all the decoration was done on clear and then I've added dots. Um, this was all done with color concentrates on this particular piece. So this is the doodle flower is this stamp on my website. That's one that I designed and it's a doodle soap dish, Bert. Who wins that? He just spun around. You still didn't tell me how much we have Um, I don't know. Probably three things. So this is our first giveaway. All right. So if you've commented, then he's spinning through the comments. Okay. Who wins this one, Bert? Okay. First winner. What did you say it was? The Doodle Flyer Soap Dish. Thank you. I know. Complicated, right? <laughs> and that is going to go to Eva Sorrell. Eva Sorrell. Awesome. You are the winner. I have your address because I ship to you quite often, right? Okay. So, Eva Sorrell. Congratulations. That one is yours. All right. So let's give this one away. This is a pour that we did a couple, maybe that was last week. I don't remember. I got losing track. I put it on a green back. So similar colors like the one I have underneath here. Okay. This is like a six by six or five and a half by five and a half um, sushi dish. Okay, Bert, who's our winner for that one? That is Janet Letton. Janet Latin, you won this glass dish. Okay, so this is a little sushi. Could be to hold your change, put a candle in it, all kinds of things. Congratulations. All right, guys, this one is an eight inch bowl. This was also one of the pours that we gave or that we demoed a couple weeks back. Okay, kind of reminds you of like the moon. Okay. Um, let's spin for this one, Bert. This one goes to Judy Rasmus, Judy Bennett Rasmussen Ship. Judy Bennett Rasmussen Ship. Yeah, I think I one. know you, Judy. <laughs> what is this? Is this is the eight inch round pour, the black and gold. Okay, congratulations, Judy. I may need your address. I'll have to look. I think I have it, but I may need to get it from you. Okay, all right. So I am going. How long have we been on? Okay, uh, we are back. Do you see my necklace? This is Deb Garrity. She makes these. Mine's on Crooked. Isn't that pretty? It's a uh, lamp work uh, heart. Anyway, okay, guys, thanks for joining me. I really like the way this went. Um, let me do one other thing. I want to test something. I want to show you on the screen. These are different pours that I did in the other. So this is like the one that I just showed you that is that square dish that I'd made into a candle holder. This one here is actually one that I told you was a pour, but it was a balloon. So this one I made it look like a flower. Um, I didn't have the picture ready tonight, but I did the um, ink on it and came back with color concentrates with the quill pen and did a Zentangle and it really made it look like a trumpet vine. Uh, there's another combination, the coral 
and the pink and the purple and the white. Yes, you have a question, Bert? Yeah, what would happen if you poured enamel and put another piece of glass on top? Oh, to use the glass as your balloon, so to speak? You could do that. It may have enough suction that it may be difficult, and then it would just kind of run together and create a stream of color. Um, I would test it on something small before I go to a larger one, okay? Uh, let me move the screen here. So that is the one that I showed you the finished sample of. That was before firing, okay? These are showing you some befores. There's some green, and uh, that's got, which color did I use? Coral, 314, 361, 302. And all of these are listed on that other video, so you can go watch it and write down the numbers and stuff that I rattle off. Here's some of those peach, red, that's got 310 vermilion, uh, the 336, purple sage, the white, and it has the coral also in it. And there's a close-up. So there's fun things that you can do with it. And there's just a uh, general look. So the smaller pieces are ones that I had. And when I had too much on my balloon, then I would go off and have those little three inch or four inch little uh, like ring dishes, that kind of thing. So that makes, or jewelry, same kind of thing. So line yourself up and remember you're going to have some excess on your balloon and then don't waste it and go over to those smaller pieces, kind of like what we did on the pour. Okay. Um, and we're back to that one. So all right, guys, thanks for joining me. And um, I think this was much better. Hey, Cindy Israel. Okay, this for platform is smooth. Went to, okay, great, great. All right, guys, thank you, thank you. And I will come live. It'll be a surprise when I get some of these fired and I'll show you what I'm going to do to finish them off. Okay, thank you. Have a great evening. And a bubblegum plate, somebody said that's cute. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do they call them? Gum gum stickers or something like that. There's some kind of a name. So anyway, all right, guys, thanks. I'm going to end it now. All right.